interested in plunging into thick woods in pitch darkness, knowing he was out there. Often I've tried to imagine how the creature must feel, since his very appearance and the sounds he makes frightened us. Our immediate reaction was to try to kill him. I suppose if a strange looking creature from another world showed up, he'd get the same reception. Legend of the Boggy Creek Monster. Perhaps one of the most famous of the Sasquatch cryptids has enthralled the citizens of Falk, Arkansas since the 1900s, although the earliest sighting supposedly dated way back to 1834. They say that this hairy hominid stands between 7 and 8 feet tall on 2 feet, and it weighs close to 300 pounds. Its chest legs and arms are covered with thick, long hair. Some accounts describe the monster as running very fast with a galloping gait and swinging its arms in a fashion similar to a monkey. Some says it has a terrible odor, being described as a combination of skunk and wet dog, and also having red eyes about the size of silver dollars. Reports say that the monster was spotted more than 40 times in just 1997 alone. It had been suggested that the animal is nocturnal. A hunter reported seeing a sighting in broad daylight, though, in the Sulphur River Wildlife Area near Falk in 2000. The Boggy Creek Monster has been the subject of four different films at least, beginning with 1973's famous The Legend of Boggy Creek. The movie centered around Bobby Ford's supposed encounter with the beast, and it played in drive-in theaters around the country and introduced millions to the legend. The famous encounter that the film is based on occurred back in 1971. Bobby and his wife, Elizabeth Ford, claimed that the monster attacked their home late on the night of May 1st. The monster, Elizabeth said, reached through a screen window, but was chased away by Bobby and Dan, his brother, who had just returned from a hunting trip. Not to be satisfied, the monster returned shortly after midnight and tossed Bobby to the ground. Bobby was then taken to the St. Michael Hospital in Texarkana and treated for large gashes across his back. He was suffering from mild shock when he arrived, according to newspaper reports. Several newspapers had been covering the legend around that time. Although no traces of blood were found at the Ford's home, three-toed footprints were found near the house, and there were scratches on the porch and the siding, and a window were both damaged. When reporter Jim Powell got the call, he was the first to report it. Although most of the more famous sightings occurred back during the 1900s, and, of course, the Ford case in 1971, sightings have continued to the present day. But before we get into the present, let's take a look at some of the past run-ins with the Sulphur River Bottom. 